Hi guys, welcome back to the show. So, we are still busy with our compound growth. Firstly, we looked at some revision that we did of the previous lesson. And also, we then went on to look at compound growth using graphs. Now, we're going to explore compound growth now using data. Data in a sense of what happens when I have the number of maybe people that went to a stadium this month and the number of people that went to the stadium the next month and the number of people that went to the stadium the other month. What is happening? What will be the growth there? Is it constant? Remember we said it's not going to be. Why? Because we are dealing with compound growth. And then also is the rate of change constant? No. Cause why? we are still dealing with compound interest. And stadiums are also a typical example of what you're talking about because you know that it depends on what is playing there. Hence, people will attend maybe in great numbers. At times, they will not attend in great numbers. And also, when exactly is the game playing? Because maybe some people might not have mode of transport to get there if it's too late or if maybe uh, they will not be able to go there because they had work if it's during the day and all. So those are just the things that you need to be considering when talking about this concept. But now let's just look in specific what it means to have compound growth when looking at data. Now we said we are still looking at compound growth and we're looking at data. Now, Week one, we are looking at or we are comparing the number of spores, right? The number of spores, spores would be bacteria maybe that we are talking about here. With number of spores in week one, you can see that it, it was 5,000. In week two, it was 5,250. So what does this mean? It means if it was to be a constant growth for the third week, it must now be 5,500, because it must increase with 250. That's if it will be a constant growth. But if not, then we need to talk about something else. So let's actually check whether it is a constant or not constant. Now you can see that with week three, it goes to 5,513. Roughly, it's closer to it being 5.5, but it is actually more by 13 there, or 13 spores. And then you go to week four. With week four, if it was a constant growth, it was supposed to be 5,750, but you can see that that's not what we are dealing with there. Instead, this is actually more by what? 38. And then with the last week, which is week five, you can see that the number of spores there was actually supposed to be 6,000 if it was a constant growth, but that's definitely not what we are dealing with. This is more by 78. So you can see that the growth is not constant, number one. The change is not constant. The rate of change is also not constant. And time, remember we said, is of a very important factor here. But let's just plot this on a graph and see exactly how does it look. On a graph, the number of spores growing in six weeks. You can see that with week one, I had 5,000. With week two, I have 5,250. With week three, I had 5,513. With week four, I had uh, 5,788. And then with week five, I had 6,000, um, and I think it was 6,078, right? It was 6,078 that we're dealing with here. So those are the values that we see. So you can see that our growth is not necessarily a constant growth that we're dealing with. But let's just try and take this further now. Now let's say if we are talking about 10 weeks now, 20 weeks, 30 weeks, 40 weeks, 50 weeks. You can see that when it was 10 weeks, our number of spores that we have is 7,757. The time it takes to double, which means from, uh, if you double the time, if you go to 20 weeks, 
it's not necessarily double what I have there, right? Because it's 12,000, so it's slightly less than double the number of spores that I had initially. If you go to 30, you can see now it's more than double that, right? So it actually took uh, until 30 weeks to double from 10 weeks. 40 weeks, you can see this is a very big number, and then 50 weeks, it's also a very big number. And if I plot this, then you can see that my growth now will look something of this nature. So this would mean that my growth is an exponential growth, right? When you talk about exponential growth, guys, remember that we are talking about a geometric sequence that you guys are familiar with here. So that's what we are actually looking at when we talk about an exponential growth. Now, let's just exaggerate it as well and say, if now I, from 50 to 250, you look at what is happening here. When you get to 250, now you are closer to a billion now. So you, you see, you, this is quite a lot of spores that we are dealing with. And if you look at between 50 and 100, that's double the time, right? But when you look at the number of spores, it's way more than double whatever that I started with at 50. So this goes back to that concept that we started with to say the time it takes for us to have a big, a smaller change is longer, but the time it takes for us to have a bigger change is actually smaller. And this, by the way, is the power of compound interest and compound growth, which we'll just look at in a short while. This is the power of what it means to deal with compound growth and what it means to deal with compound interest if it was maybe an investment or a savings account of that nature. So stay tuned. It's really quite a very big idea that we're dealing with. Now, if you look at the graph for this one, you can see that roughly here, it shows us to be having quite a very minimal change here, like from no growth at all until you get to roughly here by one, uh, one, 175 weeks. And then you get to 200 weeks, you can see it's half of that. And then it gets there, it's like uh, that amount that I have there. And that amount will actually double in a very short period of time, because this is the time it takes for it to now double, as you can see, from 20 to 40 there. And then also, for it to double, it's now a very shorter time compared to the previous one, right? So you can see it doubles in that region there. And also, as you are progressing, you can see it doubles there as well. So it takes very also minimal time for it to double. And as you continue like that. So what does this mean? It goes back to the very same concept I'm just explaining now. As you are starting, the longer the time it will make it look like it is not growing, right? But as you are progressing, you will see that now the level of growth and the rate of growth is quite rapid in a very short period of time. Hence, time is important. What do I mean when I say time? Let's say maybe we're talking about an investment. If you have an investment, it would be a good idea to leave your investment for a very long time provided that it's a realistically long time. So you can't say you're gonna live it for 100 years. Honestly, then you are not really being that realistic. But if you were to say you want to invest and you want to invest for five years, it might be a good idea to go and invest maybe for 10 years instead of five years. Because maybe for the first five years, your growth might not be that rapid. But for the last five years, it might be a very rapid growth in a very short while. So that's what we are actually looking at here. The time plays a big role in you investing or in you having growth that will take place over time. Now, let's, if we were to calculate the rate of compound growth now that we're dealing with. So, in week one, remember our first table, we had 5,000. In week two, we had uh, 5,250. So to calculate the rate here, 
remember that we are not adding, right? So from there to there, yes, the, you can add. But from there to there, you can see that what you are adding is not the same anymore. So I can't add. Instead, it's a geometric pattern. So let's quickly just look at how I would calculate this, right? So I will just write down my values here. It's 5,000. And it will be 5,250. And then it will be 5,530, right? And then what you will then do is you will look at the common ratio as we normally do under our geometric pattern. But this is just us still trying to explore this. So this will be 5250, uh, five, and then you divide this by the 5,000 there. The answer you get here must roughly be the same as the answer you get if you divide uh, these two last digits or last two numbers that I have here. So if I divide those two and I divide those two, I must roughly get the very same value that I need to get there. So that will be the case there. So five into that, you know it's going to be one comma. I'm left with um, 250. It does not go into 250. And then you will see that at the end, you will be left with a percentage, maybe roughly around 0.5% that we are dealing with. So this will be how you would then find the actual growth, a rate of growth when it comes to this. And also remember our rate of growth talks to the gradient, right? So you will just need to do gradient of this. But if we were to look at it from a perspective of gradient, it means that I would say that minus that over that minus that. But you can already see two minus one is actually just one. Hence, when I get here, I don't really take that into consideration, right? So that's what you will be looking at in terms of your uh, growth there. And if I was to look at that minus that divided by that minus that, it must give me roughly the same as that minus that divided by that minus that. But here it won't. Why? Because if that is what I would then need to get, it would mean I have the same gradient throughout. And the same gradient, what, what, what that would mean is my change is constant. So please, think about this carefully. When I'm dealing with a simple growth, which is the previous lesson that we had, we know that in a simple growth, I have a constant change. Constant change meaning I can talk about gradient, right? But now I'm dealing with a compound growth. Compound growth, it's not the same throughout. As it is not the same throughout, that means I do not have a gradient that will be the same throughout because gradient needs to be the same. I mean, also, if we quickly just go back to the, ta to the table here, you can see that if I wanted to find what the gradient is, my gradient will be changing. Maybe there it will be the same, but when I get to that point, it will be a different gradient. So I can't really talk about gradient. Hence, when you talk about the concept of rate of change, that is not constant that we are dealing with, right? So it's not constant that we're dealing with. So that's the big idea here of compound growth. Compound growth depends greatly on the time of investment or of the growth that you're dealing with. So if you're trying to open an investment one day, make sure that it's quite for a very long time and not just for two months. Because remember, if you want to invest for a year, that's not really investing. That's you saving because maybe you want to buy something at the end of the year or in two years' time. But in, when you want to invest, you want to take advantage of what compound growth is all about going forward. So that's all that I have there. So if I wanted to calculate that, this is how I would then calculate it. So our compound growth, the big idea here is it's an exponential growth that we are dealing with. And then time determines the growth that we're dealing with. So I've just been emphasizing this a lot that it is an exponential, so it takes on a form of an exponential graph like that, whereas the, the opposite of this was when we, talk, we spoke about simple growth, and remember simple growth was just like that, right? So 
these you can see that they are opposites. Here, there's a constant change, which I will just call CC, but here there is no constant change. And then also the last thing will be time determines the growth. So your time or the time it takes that you are leaving something to grow is of a very great importance in whatsoever that you are trying to grow. Guys, that's all from me for now. Let's just quickly go to an ad break and we'll be back with some more. Stay tuned.